So uh, what do you think you find most satisfying about your career or your, your academic career or your career in general? Um, I think the fact that I'm able to follow my curiosity throughout it and the fact that I mix a lot of passion. So I think sometimes we confuse like when a person has multiple passions with either you're unfocused or you're not fully committed, but I don't think that's necessarily true. And that's something I kind of personally struggle throughout until I realize there is a way to combine some of these things and it makes sense and you're able to like explore yourself fully and be even more present in your work, more creative. And so I think that is just like the ability to, oh, I love exploration in the field, but I love like the research in the lab and being able to merge that. And now like as new interests rise, which is like, oh, I love education, how we can bring that in. I love communic science communication. And then just things slowly, you know, just kind of merging together, always staying excited. If, if you were giving advice, um, Rosa, to a, a, a younger student in Newton secondary, for example, like young, maybe sixth grade or form one, so between the age of 12 and 14, somebody who was really interested in what you are doing, uh, what would you say they should really, I mean, obviously they should pay attention at school to everything. <laughs> but what should they really focus on, do you think? What, what, would you, what would you guide them to look for and study uh, particularly? I would guide them, like I would just, to be honest, recommend read obsessively as much as you can on the things that interest you, like not on what you think you're supposed to, because otherwise then you end up following paths that are already like, that have already been completed or, you know, that are more like what you can say old school, because the world is changing so fast every single year. I think COVID has reminded that uh, to us that, you know, what I'm doing right now would have not been possible 10 years ago. So if I had been thinking, sure. well, you know, the same way people think 10 years ago, how a career should go, I would have not done there. And I think sometimes, you know, I like whenever I just I'm curious about something, I just like keep reading about it. And perhaps it's not connected until eventually you realize you're able to bring all these different new ideas into your topic. And that just sets you aside, like sets you apart, you know. So in other words, they should follow their instincts and their passion in their head rather than necessarily what, what is laid out in front of them as, as a path. They, they yeah, should... I, would, I would say is that, really, you know, educators are amazing guides. And I think the main goal is to, you know, like propel what the students naturally are inclined to because that's where they're going to succeed, succeed the most. So, you know, follow what you're like, what the suggestions are and stuff like that because people more experienced will be able to guide you better. But definitely, you know, like, don't just do what you think you should be doing. Do what interests you the most because that's where you're going to be able to shine the best, really. Looking back on your IB diploma, uh, Rosa, I mean, our Form 6 students are going through uh, a challenging time. They're coming up to the exams in November. You know, I, we, if anybody who's done the IB diploma knows that it's a tough two years. Yeah. What, what advice, um, well, sorry, did the IB diploma um, help you in any way with, with, with your career or future? Yeah, it did. So uh, as I was telling you before, we basically, thanks to the IB, whenever I started my undergrad, Degree. I ended up doing two degrees in biochemistry and molecular biology in Tennessee Tech University. I was able to bypass almost like, I don't say convalidate, uh, six months, uh, well, one semester worth of classes thanks to the IV, different classes that I took. Uh, they just needed basically to say the diploma and see like the scores and stuff like that. And so because of that, that gave me like the flexibility to take a bunch of extra, you know, extracurricular activities within my degrees that really helped me a lot. I was able to take a few different travels to learn a few other languages, even art history or different cultures. And I, I like to think that all of that, you know, helped me get where I am now. So Debbie was critical to really help have a step forward, I would say. What, was it a challenge, the IB, looking for what, like, what you remember? Did you remember thinking, yes, it was, it was a challenge? It was a challenge, and I actually do remember, I was mentioning this recently in a, in a private course I had to teach to some high school students, where I do remember for that long report we had to write after the rainforest trip. Right, the extended uh, I, essay? Oh, for science, for science. Yeah, the science report. I remember I ended up having a very long document, and I didn't have a proper backup, and my computer died, and I lost it. And I had to recreate no. it all, like, at the last minute. And, but I do remember it be being very challenging, but... I think it really like prepares you very well for like what you're you know what's expected of you whenever you start um, undergrad. And um, and finally, um, Rosa, your future plans. I mean, your your life um, has been so full of uh, a, a variety of things that really, as you mentioned, are coming together uh, in unexpected ways. Let's say perhaps, but but the right way, the right ways. No, um, in future plans, like um, obviously it's hard to predict the future, but where do you see? your future career going or what what would you like which way would you like it to go 
so I, I love to stay flexible because I, you know, as we grow older and just like learn different things, I think we want to integrate different experiences and interests into our career. And I think that just keeps us, you know, fresh and always coming up with new ideas. But I, I think, so I graduate this November and I'll, I'll invite you all because most of it will be virtual. So everybody can. Okay. Great. Thank um, you. And after that, I'll be going back to Peru for like a little while to visit my family after so long. I'm going to start a postdoc uh, position here at the University of Michigan for one year uh, to dive a little bit deeper in like the Amazon work we've been doing with microbes and starting a new food programs here and actually perhaps starting a, a pilot educational program with the university uh, in tandem with um, some uh, uh, schools in the U.S., specifically one near Yellowstone and one near Alaska, to explore that, to bring together exactly what we were talking about. How can you integrate research at an early age with the science exploration, like so the components? So you're really keen. You're really keen on uh, on, on that school connection. No, you you. What is it? What what is it that you like about that? Because it's the, their future. Their their younger kids. Their younger. So the, in my field, which is basically microbial biotechnology, whether it applies to medicine or agriculture or like uh, cosmetics, something that is not being talked about enough yet is how much microbes have been integrated in our day to day lives. Just to give you an example, you know, thanks to microbes that were discovered in Yellowstone boiling waters in the US, we now have COVID testing, like the PCR testing that now wow. everybody familiarize about. Or, you know, um, some microbes are being used in factories of the Chobani yogurt to clean the pipes in a more sustainable way. And, or, you know, some are being used to, to help produce some of the vegan meat that we have out there. So they, it's, they're so present that we don't know about and it's lacking in the educational curriculum right now. All I've been able, like uh, researching about the educational curriculum in terms of microbes, just it's limited so far as to a very um, overview of microbes and what they do. And I think by integrating that like early on, it's what's critical to start developing just new ideas because what's going to be available 10 years from now is going to be insane in, in terms of the biotechnology world. I think that's where the world is moving in terms of how we can use nature to help us in different processes that make us alive better. And th I think that's what like drives me. Like, why is it not integrated yet at an early age? How can so, we... So that's why you're trying to delve back into maybe the, the, the younger, the primary school or early secondary school, no? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And in and, and personal, like personally, for my academic work, I would definitely want to continue with microbes, but I want to um, focus a little bit more on the on the microbes living in animals. Specifically, I want to start with the Amazonian animals. I may actually start a new project next year with some collaborators in Iquitos uh, that have been uh, cultivating uh, Amazonian bees and basically studying the honey that they do that some communities use as medicinal honey and some actually are uh, some of that honey can even be poisonous and nobody's looking yet at what's making that difference and can we harness something there that is useful to us in a sustainable way without disrupting the environment and so uh, i think that would allow you to start that or you're hoping to start that you're we are going to start actually we're already doing some preliminary work but i'll dive a little bit deeper into that next year with the goal of also helping the apicultures uh, communities that you know are there that's the way they're sustaining economically right now especially through COVID by selling the honey and we want to elevate that with research and that is just like the the first step towards how can we help towards animal conservation and nature conservation through microbes and I think that's yeah. and Rosa with Peru still talking about Peru and the and the Quitos, uh, and the bees no do, do you you want to bring things back to Peruvian research yeah. because of your roots I mean that that's an important part of the direction that you you, you travel Yes, a hundred percent. The way I envision in an ideal world, it would be awesome to have some sort of lab setting in Peru where we can educate a lot more like researchers that want to be, that are in the country, that want to stay in the country, that, you know, I didn't have the ability to do that kind of research back then. And I, I think we now have the ability or getting close to, uh, but propelling that in collaboration with institutions outside that have perhaps, you know, different kind of technology that we can harness and just facilitating that type of research so that we can use it to really improve not just the science in our country, but you know how can we conserve it better? How can we elevate the value of different things just to a whole other level? There's a lot of hope with our with our with our students. I mean, uh, they're they're very passionate about many things: uh, quality, uh, equity, um, and one of them is obviously the environment. I mean, it's part of a, a lot of what we teach now. Is not you know the environment is within every course. I mean, it's it's critical, obviously. 
um, uh, as part of it, and they're very passionate, very passionate about it. And Peru's biodiversity supports that, of course. Uh, that's why we like taking our students to to the jungle. In fact, we would go more if we could. We haven't been during the the COVID uh, time. Uh, yeah. You remember Mr. Brugas? Do you remember Mr. Brugas? I do. Yeah, of course. He's still there. I mean, he's he's uh, he's still. Oh, in fact, he's in the jungle right now. Mr. Uh, Ash, remember yeah. Mr. Ash? Yeah, of course. Mr. Ash is retired now. So he's now in the UK. Oh wow! Um, I see. Yeah, but um, but they. I, I presume they must have been some of your teachers, no? I, I, yeah, I do remember Dr. Brugers as like the Indiana Jones. I remember him with the <laughs> machete and kind of, like jumping off the boat and like getting the like the big lagarto. The king, like, the 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 came came yeah. Oh, I remember. Yeah. I could like, clearly. I like I said. I, I do think that that trip made one of the biggest differences I've had at my early age, like to to where I am right now. It really did. I mention it often because it really did a big impact. And so, right. you know, I also think that what everybody like. I, I think you guys do an amazing job at not minimizing, you know, art and culture, which unfortunately some schools end up doing and, uh, well, you know, hopefully we'll move away from that. But I think you guys do a fantastic job at that because then every people, everybody feels welcome in terms of their interests and so everybody gets to explore. And then just the fact of mixing things that you can do with your hands in the field just sets your mindset to, a whole, you know, it just opens so many avenues in, in our minds. So I do think that is just, I got so lucky to be in that program at that time and I hope the students get to, you know, do the travel too at some point and I would love to join one. Thank you, Rosa. Thanks so much for your time and it's been a real pleasure talking to you. It's lovely to reconnect with you and, um, and good yeah, luck with everything. Thank touch. you so much. I'll keep you guys posted when I have the link for my defense and don't hesitate to, you know, contact me for anything. I'd love to meet some of the classrooms whenever there's some chance. Thank you so much and take Thanks care. Thanks. Bye-bye.